Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Actual Tech Media. We're here today at DriveScale where I'm joined by Gene Vanman, who is the CEO of the company. And this time we're gonna do a whiteboard video around the DriveScale architecture. Gene, thank you for being here. Delighted to be here, thank you. So, what does DriveScale look like if I pull back the covers? All right, so let me start with the, what looked like before DriveScale would come on the scene and then sure. I'll show how, how we changed the, uh, the look of, of the data center. Okay. So, we are looking at applications that uh, are large applications like Hadoop uh, and uh, NoSQL. Typically, the large Hadoop application runs on commodity servers with embedded storage, and they are hundreds or thousands. And the NoSQL databases are similarly uh, running on commodity servers, uh, and this time they have flash drives embedded, and these are typically, you know, a dozen to 80, you know, kind of kind of cluster size. So large applications running across uh, a large number of servers. The thing that we noted was that the storage to compute ratio is fixed at purchase time. Mm -hmm. So. When you buy your, uh, your uh, platform, you need to make sure that there's enough resources there to last you three years. So people have typically way over-provisioned, like most of these clusters are running at 25% capacity, just yeah, that, in case. And that's not even just for these types of applications, that's right. just across the board. Across I've, the board we've yeah. seen that with even traditional applications, which is really wasteful. So what our founders figured out was that the advent of 10 gigabit ethernet switches had enough bandwidth and low latency that we could disaggregate the, the disk drive storage from the compute. So we replaced these uh, commodity servers with commodity diskless servers. Let's use that green one. Yeah, let's use the green one. So now these are diskless servers times 100 or 1,000 and hooked up to a switch which is then connected to JBODs. And each JBOD will have 80 to 100 uh, disk drives in it. And a particular disk in a JBOD can be assigned to a particular server through our DriveScale uh, uh, software control system, DSC software. Software will make the assignment of this disk drive to this server happening through the switch. Now, uh, earlier you asked me if we're a hardware company or a software company. We're predominantly a software company, but there are bits and pieces of hardware that didn't exist in the market that we needed to, to create to make this architecture work. So we actually have a, uh, a little piece of hardware here that takes SAS protocol here and converts it to iSCSI Ethernet here. So are the, all the disks talking to the SAS piece here and then that's how they're addressable? You talk to this and then it converts whatever it needs to do to SAS so it knows how to get down to the disk level? Right. Okay. So there's these little SAS to Ethernet bridges uh, that sit in front of the JBODs that convert SAS to iSCSI and then connects it on to, to each of the servers. Okay. And does this architecture look similar in the world of Flash? So with the Flash world, it is similar uh, and we run the same software but the infrastructure is now 100 gig, 100 gigabit switches rather than 10 gig. So you have now uh, your NoSQL servers, which typically are very memory, uh, large memory. And uh, instead of JBODs, there's a new device called an eBOF. An eBOF, e -bof, is Ethernet Box of Flash. Okay. And in this case, it actually has NVMe over fabric so you don't coming need, out of the box. You don't need this either. We don't need this interim, interim box. So this, this has Ethernet connections coming out of your eBOF, going through the 10 gig switch, and off to each of these servers. And again, these are add as many as you want, and you can interconnect however you like. 
Now here, you're telling a server you're connected to this disk. I understand on Flash, you don't have to go down to the disk level. You can go more granular. How does that work technically? Are you doing it at, at the block level? How is that, how is that working uh, in the architecture? Yeah, so, so with, with the disk drive, uh, you have a disk drive and there's an actuator that goes out and, and goes back and forth across the disk. So if you were attaching this disk drive to two servers, each server would think it owns the whole disk and, and it would start thrashing right. and the performance would go to hell. Where in the case of uh, a flash drive, it is totally random access. Uh, so you can access there and access there and access there at the same time. So you can have, so we, we have technology that allows you to slice up this flash drive into bits and pieces. And we can assign a particular piece of flash through the switch to a container that is sitting on this drive. So this container has a direct attachment to a, to a piece of flash uh, and this container over here has a direct attachment to another piece of flash on the same flash drive. And so you can slice the drive up into little tiny pieces. In this, in this environment, the uh, flash is so expensive that over-provisioning, unlike disk drives, over-provisioning was relatively inexpensive. Here, it, it's, it's, it's a killer mm -hmm. economically. And some of these containers don't really need large capacity. They maybe need a, a, you know, 10 or 15 gigabytes. So being able to share your flash drive with different containers on different servers really saves an enormous amount of money. Um, on the flash model, is it possible, is it still a one-to-one -one, um, address in between the, the, block, the block of flash and the, or can, more, can multiple servers um, talk to one slice? So no, Not, okay. every slice is owned by that particular connection. And in fact, it's important that it is because the security software that is protecting this data runs on the server up here. Got it. Okay. And since there are now uh, you know, more or less open connections to this slice from other servers, uh, this connection between this slice of flash and this server is uh, public key authenticated. And so another server that might be taken over by a rogue could not get access to this piece of flash uh, because it doesn't have the right keys. Okay, so if anything wants to access that, it's gotta go through the server piece. Yeah, so that's handled at the application level. If yeah. you want two servers to access the same data, that application will then uh, distribute that right to these different servers. Got it. Very good. Thank you for this overview. This was really good. Thank you.